Michael, what should I do? Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. Behave yourselves! Hello, YouTubers out there. This is Jerry Sotovia at the Movies. So today we're going to talk about one of those topics that I have talked about in the past and written about for the last 30 years, and that would be violence in cinema. Now, let me start off by saying I don't object to violence in movies or sex, but however, there is an issue that was recently brought up by William H. Macy, and Let's talk about that. Now, this is the actor, of course, from the films uh, Fargo, and, and he also did the show Shameless. He's been an, an actor for quite some time. So, he said, <clears throat> when talking about violence in films today, if you kill one person in a movie, it's quite dramatic. When you kill 18 people, it's just porn. And what can be more dramatic than that but to kill 18 more after that? Now, Here's my feeling on it. Body count in movies has been something that you normally see in action thrillers, action movies. So let's say 30 years ago. We'll start with the Lethal Weapon pictures. Each Lethal Weapon movie, the body count went up. Now, uh, I can't say how many people were killed, but let's just say by the third film, it was more than in the second or the first. And of course, all of you know, with regards to slasher pictures, horror movies of that type, especially slasher movies, that's always the case. Each sequel, they up the ante a little. I've noticed that I've only seen a couple of scenes from John Wick, and my impression of that is basically this. <laughs> that's it. That's a lot of action movies today. Get a gun and you shoot, with two guns, hopefully. You know, John Woo style. Now, I don't know if that's how the whole movie is. I've understood that he kills quite a few people in the last John Wick, which is uh, John Wick 4. My feeling is this. It depends on the type of action movie we're talking about, or the type of Western. There's a huge difference from, say, Clint Eastwood in Unforgiven versus uh, any other Western, let's say, from the past that even Clint Eastwood did. It's a huge difference, okay? But generally speaking... What it comes down to is the protagonist is usually seen as the hero in action movies. The protagonist. So because of that, we are meant to identify with the protagonist. And whatever actions he takes are meant to be justified by the protagonist. And thus he's justifying it to us, the audience. So when Dirty Harry throws his badge and decides to go after the bad guys by himself were meant to celebrate the actions of a cop who decided to go rogue, so to speak. However, here's the thing. When you have a movie where the hero, the actions don't seem quite justified. Maybe he's killing people he shouldn't have killed. And then we are also made to identify with the victims. So if we identify with the victims and we start to see their humanity or in particular, the villain's humanity, then we enter a gray area. Now, there are movies that have done that. Certainly, for lack of a better example, Clint Eastwood's Unforgiven, I think, is an excellent example of that type of movie. The first Death Wish with Charles Bronson to a certain extent. So because we have that gray area, now we've entered the anti-hero phase. The anti-hero who may not be quite a hero after all. Right? Anti-heroes usually work best in movies such as film noir or in a time of, say, existential dread, when a lot of crap is happening in, in the country or around the world. Uh, and so we look to see, you know, some of that filter through our, our, the films that we watch to some degree. That used to be in the 70s, late 60s through the 70s. But eventually the hero took over. So... If you're going to have a hero in the movie, you're expected to root for the hero. It's really that simple. You're not expected to root against the hero. Okay? Because the minute you do that, that means you've entered that gray area. So that means that the protagonist now, their actions, are questionable. 
and the audience then is not sure if they should be rooting for this character. A case in point would be Viggo Mortensen in A History of Violence by the director David Cronenberg. That's a movie that people who like action movies are not really into that movie. Because Viggo Mortensen, right from the start of the film, famous scene where uh, there's a, a diner shootout. There are two robbers that come in there, murderous robbers, ready to rape and kill. And uh, he systematically is able to uh, kill both of them real quick. And he shoots one of them in the head. And what we see is, yeah, we see the blood splatter, but we also see the effects of the face and the skin all sticking out. And it's just gross. That's David Cronenberg. When you show a shot like that, then suddenly the actions of who we think is the hero, because he saved the diner, because he works there and he saved the diner from further violence. Now we're not too sure, which of course we are not supposed to be, because he is, spoiler alert, a former hitman. So you see, that's the difference between that and John Wick. Now, here's another bone of contention that I have with regards to, and I don't agree with saying violence as porn. I don't like using the word porn. So let's just say gratuitous violence. That would be more <laughs> exemplary. Horror movies in general, slasher pictures, you'll notice there are certain, I won't name their names. It's not really a, a horrible thing to mention. It's just a fact. YouTube critics that review, that are much younger than I am, that review slasher pictures, many of them prefer the sequels, let's say, to Texas Chainsaw Massacre than the original Ch Chainsaw Massacre. In fact, one of them preferred the remake over the original of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Now, the original, the person can barely look at it. Very interesting. But the sequels, no problem, nor the remake. Why? Probably because the violence is hyperbolic. It's over the top in, in those sequels. The original movie leaves it to the, to the imagination. You can't, you don't quite see the connection. You know, if somebody gets impaled on a hook, you see their agony and screaming, but you don't actually see the impalement. So you have to think about the violence that you're seeing. And that's what really what it comes down, what it comes down to. There are people who love gore. There are gore hounds, because if there weren't, uh, both Terrifier movies wouldn't have done as well as they did. It's really that simple. And they're about as bloody as you can imagine. And I mean truly bloody. So that's where we are. Terrifier doesn't have to be that bloody. You know, this is a, uh, and I've reviewed this film before, this is a supernatural entity. It's a clown, but a supernatural entity. He's fearsome, he's ugly, there's something about him that's watchable, it's all made for you for a horror movie. You don't have to do anything else. So why would a supernatural entity feel the need to slice and dice and kill when they could figure out some other way? You know, like even Wishmaster has some imagination. <laughs> and I don't even like Wishmaster. You know, this would be the only time really where I, I give some sort of ringing endorsement sort of to Wishmaster of all things. So violence... It, it, it has to be, it should be impactful in movies, but it is true. The more people you kill, particularly in John Wick or Nobody, which is a very good example as well, the same idea, shoot, 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 you know, punch, 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 kick, 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 shoot, 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 shoot. So by then you've killed at least 12, 13 people. Um, William H. Macy brought up another good, good, interesting point, which was about the OK Corral. Right, the gunfight at the OK Corral, four people were killed. Wow. Seems like that's a low body count, I guess, huh? And he's in a, uh, he just recently did a Western, and he was talking about how in the first uh, few pages, nine people are killed. And he says, can we please just limit, you know, maybe in the Old West, you can redefine how many people really were killed. Not that often. You watch McCabe and Mrs. Miller, by, by the way, highly recommended, Western by director Robert Altman. Uh, very little body count, but the deaths have impact. That's the thing. They have impact. They sting you. You know, Dirty Harry, Charles Bronson, they don't really sting you with the violence. It doesn't have a powerful impact. Taking a human life, 
should be a very be powerful thing, if you think about it. It should have a great deal of impact, if you care about the person. If they're just a bunch of one-dimensional minions, and you don't care about them, then it's like a video game. You're just shooting one after another. That would be John Wick, from what I've seen. Maybe someday I'll watch John Wick to give a more proper review, but based on the clips I've seen, that's what you see, and that accounts for a lot of action movies today. So, I don't know. Let me your thoughts. Tell me what you think about William H. Macy and his comments. What about violence uh, in any form, uh, whether it's in movies or uh, television? Um, what do you think is really happening? Is it really as bad as he says, or is it actually even worse? Uh, I would go with probably just as bad as he says, but I'd like to hear what the rest of you have to say. So for those of you who haven't subscribed, please do. And for those who are subscribers, please hit the not notification bell for future uploads. And this is Jerry Saravia, The Movies, signing off.